What's up guys, Brett Medlock here. Today I'm going to be talking about Rico for the Nintendo Switch. It's pretty exciting, it's a pretty good game, but before that, I wanted to talk about me and Greg Vargas, whose review you're about to be hearing. We're going to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin from April 12th to April 14th for the Midwest Gaming Classic. We're going to be doing a panel, we're going to be doing some giveaways, so if you're in the area, come check out the Midwest Gaming Classic. It should be a lot of fun. Anyway, let's jump on into the Nintendo Switch review of Rico. The first-person shooter library on the Nintendo Switch is pretty shallow. Many titles like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, and various other AAA games have mostly skipped the platform, but others like Payday, Doom, and now Rico have made their attempts to provide the platform with FPS titles to fill the void. Rico is essentially a first-person shooter action game with roguelike elements in its procedurally generated environment. That's a pretty big mouthful. It features online multiplayer and split-screen co-op, but can also be played in single player and it emphasizes action-packed gunfights and slow motion shooting. There isn't much story in Rico, but it actually sets the game up fairly well. There's a new law put into place allowing officers from various agencies to infiltrate criminal hideouts in efforts to bust and disrupt their operations. This also opens up a number of different game modes with daily challenges, climbing leaderboards, and quick play cases. The main mechanic in Rico is the ability to slow down time when kicking in doors. In games like Max Payne, bullet time is obtained and enacted when needed. However, in Rico, these instances are somewhat random. Kicking in a door will slow things down automatically, allowing you to pick off enemy onlookers who are caught off guard. Each area that you enter has a number of randomized rooms within a building. This means that rooms, enemies, and placement of evidence are different each go-around. Clearing a list of tasks in each area earns you merits. These include things like disarming bombs, obtaining evidence, and destroying assets. Completing these challenges will pay out more merits to use for new weapon and character upgrades. Things like extended clips and flashlight mods can be added to your pistols and Uzi. Room randomization attempts to keep the gameplay fresh, but the roguelike elements also become a problem in places. When you die during a stage, all of your weapon upgrades and previous progress are lost. This essentially plays out very well, riling me up for the next go around. But when this design started to break down during each of my playthroughs, it riled up frustration instead of excitement to return as a more seasoned officer. But the monumentum is better kept when you have a buddy online to ease the panic when enemies flood the screen. Another oversight is with randomly generated levels, there were more than a few times where evidence needed for a task was placed behind a table not reachable. Since there is no jump button in the game, I was left to back out of the level and abort. I only happened to experience this weird issue in single player though. The gunplay starts to feel a lot better after a few hours. At that point, I felt seasoned enough to run through the case missions. These are missions where you play through multiple levels and clear buildings and have higher difficulty areas. The part that really starts to cheapen these areas comes with the layers of additional tasks added as the mission goes on. At times, the entire checklist of items is laid out in front of you. Get 20 enemy headshots, disarm two bombs, collect evidence, etc. This is fairly doable considering new doors unlock as you clear each room and disable door locks. However, there are times when additional bombs must be disarmed even though you've gone through and cleared each floor. When this happens toward the end of the level as reinforces are on the way, it becomes more of a frustration than a challenge. It's just an unnecessary hindrance to the single player progression. The deaths that come with this feel far cheaper due to the fact that there are really no control of them from level to level. By comparison, playing with a buddy online makes missions more feasible to complete, almost making them easy at times. However, bombs still lead to cheap deaths, ending the run for two players instead of one. I enjoyed the visuals with their light cell shaded style, but I was also surprised to see breakable furniture and shelving throughout the game. Even fire extinguishers split and explode, releasing a cloud of white fog. Although, character models typically fall into only three generic categories, Russian mobsters, Asian mobsters, and tactical soldiers. I initially thought the slowdown mechanic in Rico would get tiresome, doing it room after room. However, I ultimately didn't mind it. The feature to have a simultaneous countdown before breaching a door with a partner was cool to see. The multiplayer for the game has been fairly easy to pair and pretty quickly you're clearing buildings. However, the menus don't have the biggest ease to use, often getting caught in the options at the top of the screen when you're simply trying to ready up for the match. Overall though, Rico has quite a bit in terms of randomized levels and tasks to complete in its roguelike first person shooter setting. However, the game trips over itself when random placement hinders the level progression. These instances 
instances become more and more frustrating as the level difficulty ramps up. Still though, there's a lot of potential with Rico, I wouldn't mind revisiting the game after a patch or two. As it stands though, it's a nice addition to the online multiplayer shooter library on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks a lot for watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and maybe even that notifications bell if you're feeling generous. I'll talk to you guys later.